If you've watched my video on five ways to make air defense more realistic in DCS, then you saw that one of the tips was to use the Skynet IAD system. Naturally, I got several comments asking, how do you set up a Skynet IADS? We'll answer that question in this video. The first thing you'll want to do is download the script from the creator's website. I'll leave a link for the site in the description. Once you're there, you'll be on this page, and you can find the latest release by clicking on the releases link over here. Just grab the latest zip file. That'll have everything we need. This download package contains a lot of files, but we really only need two of them. This one contains all the Skynet specific code, and this other one is how Skynet talks to DCS. Without these two files, we won't see any Skynet functionality. You'll want to put these two files someplace that's easy to find while in the DCS Mission Editor. A good place to put them is in the DCS Mission folder. By default, this is on your C drive under Users. Now we want to fire up DCS and get into the Mission Editor. Create a new mission and then place a SAM battery. Let's start with an SA-11 site. One of the things mentioned in the documentation for Skynet is that the site's radar should be the first unit placed in the group. So we'll start with the Snowdrift radar. Then we'll round out the site with six Tellars and a C2 vehicle. Here's what that'll look like in the game. One very important thing to remember about Skynet is that the SAM sites in an IADS need to follow a specific naming convention for the script to work. This is because it groups the sites together by their name. So if they have mismatched names, Skynet won't know to include them and you'll lose out on the IADS functionality. We're going to name this group SAM1. Next we want to create more SAM sites for our IADS. So we can just copy and paste this one using the Control c and Control v hotkeys. Now you'll notice that the mission editor changed up the name slightly. That's okay. What we care about is the first part that says SAM. Skynet works on this first part, which it calls the prefix. As long as the prefix is the same, then the script will recognize them as part of the same network of SAM sites to include in the IADS. Alternatively, you can use a pre-made template found here. Then you can pick from a list of templates here. Next, we need to add an early warning radar to act as the eyes of the IADS while the SAM sites are inactive. Pick one of the radars from the EW category and place it where its yellow detection ring covers our SAM batteries. You'll want them inside because the early warning radar can't give them a warning if they're outside of its detection area. Just like with our SAM sites, our EW radar needs to follow a naming convention. So we'll call it EW1, with the EW being the prefix. One important thing to remember is that we want to put that prefix here in the unit name for the EW radar. This is different than our SAM sites where we put the prefix in the group name. We now have our units placed in DCS and we've copied the two core files in our mission directory. But we're still missing a critical part, and that's the part that gets the two talking to each other. For that, we're going to need to create a Lua file that tells Skynet which units to control. For this part, you do not need to be an expert at Lua coding. In the same folder where you have the two core files, create a new file and name it myiads.lua. You can call it whatever you want, but just make sure it has a Lua extension. Now open it up with Notepad or whatever your favorite code editor is. To get our IADS working, we just need to add four lines. Now let's go through each one and explain what it does. First, we're going to create the IADS itself with the following line. Unlike the SAM battery and the EW radar, the IADS does not have a physical unit in DCS. It's just an abstract grouping that ties everything together. In this line of code, we're calling our IADS red IADS. Now we're going to add physical units to our abstract grouping. We'll start by adding our SAM sites using this line of code. What this is doing is going into the mission and looking for any groups that have the prefix SAM in their name. If it finds one, it, then it gets added as a SAM site to red IADS. This is why we named our sites in a way where they all began with SAM. 
Let's add our AW. This works just like our SAM sites. Use this line of code. Any radars with the prefix EW will then get added to the IADs and become the early warning for the network. Lastly, we need to start up the IADs, and we do that with this simple command. With these four lines of code out of the way, we're done with our Lua file. The very last step we need to do is include all these files in our DCS mission. We do that with a trigger. In our triggers window, we want to add a single trigger that goes off at mission start. So select mission start from this dropdown. What that trigger will do is load up all our scripts and start up our IADs. Once you have your mission start trigger in place, just add an action for each of our files. Add a do script file action for the mist file. Add another one for the Skynet file. And lastly, we need one for our custom my IADs file. That's it. We're done now and can try out the mission. In the mission, you'll see the EW radar pinging away, but the SAM sites will be quiet. Once we get within range, they'll wake up and lock on to us. Congratulations, you now have your very own Skynet IADs up and running. Now you might be thinking, this is a lot of work. Will I have to do this every time? The good news is that everything we did just now is reusable, so no, you don't have to do this every time. If you wanted to add more SAMs or EW radars to this mission, you would just add them in the mission editor. Just make sure they have the right prefixes and Skynet will automatically add them. Everything else is already in place. Now, what if you wanted to use Skynet in a different mission? You would just reuse the Lua file we created just now. Make sure all the groups in the mission have the right prefix in their names, and you can just add in our custom Lua file. That's it. So let's do a quick recap on all this. After you download Skynet, get these two files from the zip and put them someplace easy to find. Next, you want to create your SAM sites and EW radars in the mission editor. Make sure you name them all using a common prefix for each type. Don't forget that Skynet uses the unit name of the EW radar instead of the group name. Create a custom Lua file for this mission. This is where you'll call all the elements of the SAM network using their prefix names. You can reuse this file in other missions if you keep using the same prefix names. Lastly, we tie everything together with a trigger that calls all three of the files we talked about earlier. If we reuse those three files, then we can actually skip steps one and three in any future missions we make. And that's it, you're ready to create Skynet enabled missions. Now you might have questions about Skynet that I didn't answer in this video, so I'm going to leave a link to the Discord set up by Skynet's creator. That's the best place to go to find the answers you're after. I hope this video was informative and thank you for watching.